الله ربنا هو الاله له من الاسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك الله ربنا هو الاله له من الاسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطاهرين Respected elders, brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله In our discussion about the Masail of Hajj, we have looked into the importance and the obligation of making this pilgrimage and spiritual journey to the, the Holy Land, the Holy House, the house which is Baytullah, the first house on the earth where the devotion to the one true God was expressed and throughout history up until our time up until the end of times that is the place where the ultimate total submission to the one true God is expressed and the manner in which this is expressed and experienced has several advantages spiritual upliftment and getting closer to God social bonding between the believers political freedom from evil forces, economic exchange and upliftment and other advantages, cultural and educational for example. But this journey is so important and so effective that even a once in a lifetime experience is enough to transform an individual. But it is not wajib on everyone, only those who are capable financially and physically and for whom there are no other restrictions or ob more important obligations holding them back. And then we looked into the importance of making taqlid and following the expert opinions of the rightly qualified, certified, most learned expert in the field of the fiqh and the mazhab of the Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam. One of the first wajib acts that we will be confronted with once we arrive in the holy city of Medina is the opportunity to pray in the holy mosque of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then we said that there is an option here whether we want to pray full though we are travelers and staying there for less than 10 days or we have the option of praying Qasr and the importance of the holy city of Medina of course is because of the burial of the Holy Prophet. The Prophet decided to settle there after migration from Mecca and the Prophet decided to return back to the holy city of Medina despite the fact that in the eighth year of Hijrah his homeland and birthplace Mecca had already been liberated from shirk. So essentially Hajj is a supreme divine plan against the devil's plan whereby we commit ourselves in all aspects of our lives to devote ourselves to God and God alone and we seek his pleasure by declaring through the labbaik Allahumma labbaik our total obedience and submission to God and God alone and then we learn through the process of ihram and the prohibitions how to avoid that which displeases God and then once we reach Masjid al-Haram through the process of tawaf and the other ibadat, we learn how to follow the steps of the angels, for example, in tawaf, how to follow the steps of the messengers before and the last messenger as they expressed their obedience to God in the different ibadat. And we do this not individually, we do this collectively, and therefore we achieve unity by the display of equality for all 
be it high class and low class people, be it whatever color and race we come from, by the outward similarity in our dress before God and the unity especially which is achieved through congregation prayers in the two holiest mosques, the Masjid al-Haram and the Masjid al-Nabawi and of course other mosques also. Unfortunately, in the past, so during the Ottoman Empire, for example, if you look at some of the old pictures of the Kaaba, you will see huge member, four members around the Kaaba, the four different mazhabs. The Sunni mazhabs used to have their own four different Salatul Jama'ah in the Masjid Haram around the Kaaba. Now, of course, there's one unified common Salah for everyone, and you can see the show and the display of the strength of the Muslims and definitely one of the purposes achieved by congregation is the display of strength of Islam in such a way that those who are opposed should not be tempted to want to attack the Muslims or exploit the Muslims or oppress the Muslims and this spirit of praying in congregational prayers for the sake of unity and strength of Muslims, all the Shia followers of the Mazhab of the Ahlul Bayt, whether they're from Iran, where there is a majority of the Shia right now, or from other parts of the world, they all come and join with all the other Sunni Muslims and pray behind one Sunni Imam. Conversely, in Iran, you go to different cities where there may be a minority of Sunnis, be it Tehran, be it Qom, be it Baluchistan, where there is a majority of the Sunnis in Iran. In all these places, you find that the Sunnis are ready to pray behind the Shia Imam in their Salah. And this is very important because all mazhabs should have a common ground whereby they come together and the differences are set aside especially at a time when we find that in throughout the muslim world there are areas where the muslims are under attack unfortunately some misguided uh, shia extremists or misguided sunni extremists or some people who call themselves muslims but are not actually muslims are attacking their own muslim brothers and one of the ways to prevent this and to bring about unity and brotherhood is this congregational prayer together and hajj is the best way to do it it begins in Arafah, for example, on the 9th of the Hijjah, when all the Muslims from all over the world on the same day in the same place congregate in one area. And there's a huge Salatul Jama'ah in Masjid Namira in Arafah. And of course, on a daily basis, the Salatul Jama'ah in the uh, different mosques. I would like to uh, point out the fatwa of, it's not only the fatwa of the Shia Mujtahids based on the uh, guidance of the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt salam, that recommends that we should pray together with the Sunni brothers but even in the Sunni Mazhab despite the fact that they are different Mazhabs they have a fatwa which says that the follower of one Imam of the mazhab of one imam can pray behind the follower of the mazhab of another imam so observe Ibn Abidin quotes in his book he says that uh, there is no karaha in praying behind uh, an imam of another mazhab so long as of course that imam is praying a sahih salah in his own mazhab and uh, the reason for that is because we find that many Sahaba and many Tabi'een, the generation after the Sahaba, they were Imams, they were Mujtahids also before these four Imams. And they used to pray behind each other despite the fact that they were of different opinions and different mazhabs. So the Sunni Fatwa allows Salah to the Sunni follower behind the Imam of any other mazhab. No. In fact, they say you can even pray behind 
a person who is uh, who is ahlul bid'ah he has made something uh, introduced something in the religion which is not there you can even pray behind them they say in fact even if he's an extremist and a, and a member of the khawarij you can still pray behind them amazing this fatwa is that of course it's makru but not haram to pray behind a slave or to pray behind an, a Bedouin Arab out in nomad in the desert he doesn't know the Sharia uh, fully well compared to the city dweller makru to pray behind fasik makru to pray behind them a'ma a blind person aw mubtada one who uh, brings bid'ah into faith makru to pray behind but allowed and also kullu man kana min qiblatina even if he's ahlul qibla and prays salah but unfortunately they consider our blood the sunni say they consider the sunni blood as halal you can shed sunni blood he's a khariji and he considers Sunni property halal, the khawarij. We can even pray behind them, they say. So if they are allowed to pray, according to their fatwa, behind the imam of any other Sunni mazhab, in fact, even Ahlul Bid'ah, in fact, even the khawarij, in the time of Marhum Ayatullah al-Uzma, uh, Sayyid Hussein Burujardi Taba Taba'i, there was a, a unity achieved between the uh, Shia Mazhab, Ja'fari Mazhab, and the other Sunni Mazhabs, and the Mufti, the Grand Mufti of Al Azhar, issued that famous edict saying that even the Mazhab of Ja'fari, we recognize it to be a, a valid, legitimate Mazhab, and therefore as an extension to pray behind the Ja'fari Imam should also be a Sahih Salah. And there's a reason why the Sunni Muftis give this fatwa, that we can follow the uh, prayer of any other mazhab. They say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi has said, Sallu khalfa man qala la ilaha illallah. If there's somebody who says la ilaha illallah, you can pray behind that person. Any mazhab, doesn't matter. وَصَلُّوا عَلَى مَنْ مَاتَ مِنْ أَهْلِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And of course you should also pray on the person who dies saying لا إله إلا الله. He dies as a Muslim. So pray Salatul Mayyad for him. And they say there is ijma' and consensus between the Sunni fuqaha and ulama of the ummah that you can pray behind a fasiq or a deviant or a person of bid'ah even Mu'tazila and Shia and Khawarij and Jabriya and like others. So praying behind uh, a non-majority uh, mazhab amongst the Sunnis is also acceptable. And there's ijma' on this, consensus on this fatwa. Or Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari gives the reason why it is allowed to pray behind a person of another mazhab. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, you sallun lakum. They are praying with you and that prayer is for your benefit. The Imam who prays, Kwanini, fa in asabu fa lakum wa lahum. If he has prayed in a correct way which is acceptable to God, you will get the reward of the Sahih Salah and of course he will also get the Thawab. وَإِنْ أَخْطَأُوا فَلَكُمْ وَعَلَيْهِمْ But if he makes a mistake and he's deviated, the punishment will go to him. But you will get the thawab of praying behind a Muslim. It is Sahih Salah. Or they have this general fiqh rule which justifies praying behind the imam of any mazhab, which says, كُلُّ مَنْ صَحَّتْ صَلَاتُهُ لِنَفْسِهِ Whosoever prays a salah which is sahih according to his own mazhab, sahat salatuhu li ghayrih. And therefore, this salah will be sahih for the others also. So, not only the Shia Imams say that we should pray behind and can pray behind the Sunni Imams, even the Sunni Imams and the Muftis say they can pray behind the Shia Imams. And therefore, the one opportunity 
and of chance we get to have the global congregational prayers is during Hajj. But there are differences, and I pointed out. Some of these differences are manageable, they are minor, uh, or they are not of big concern. How you make wudu is something private, and uh, standing up with no gap is no problem. You can always adjust. If they don't, the imam doesn't recite bismillah, you can always recite your bismillah. Keeping hands open is possible because some mazhabs allow it. To recite after the imam and the issue of sajda and qunut is mustahab, we can skip. Tashahud is done silently so we can recite the uh, formula that we have received. So the important question now is, despite the differences and the permission to pray behind an imam of another mazhab, how should we recite the salah? The answer. The most important difference is that our mujtahids say that when you pray behind an imam of another mazhab, then you should recite your own fatiha and your own surah. But this fatwa is not only of the Shia mujtahids, even the Sunni. So for example, the Hanafi mazhab says that, are you allowed to recite behind the Imam the Fatiha and the Surah? He says no. But the Maliki said yes, you are allowed to, especially in the silent whisper salah, Zuhur Asr, but not in the loud salah, Maghrib, Isha and Fajr. Shafi'i says yes, you are allowed to recite Fatiha and the Surah in the whisper salah, but not in the loud salah. Hanbali says, yes, even in the loud salah, but if for some reason you can't hear the recitation of the imam. So recitation behind the imam is there even in the Sunni mazhabs. In the Shia mazhab, Marumaitul Khoi and Sayyid Sistani, they say, you make the knee of jama'ah, you want to pray jama'ah, but then the rules of jama'ah, the rules of jama'ah are that I uh, transfer the responsibility of reciting Fatiha and the Surah to the imam. That rule will not apply. So I have to recite my own Fatiha and my own Surah. But if I'm going to recite Fatiha in the Surah, if it's a whisper Salah, no problem. What if it's a loud Salah, Maghrib, Isha and, and Fajr, no problem. As an exception, you recite it silently in whispers. If even whispers is going to distract, distract or disrupt others, recite it mentally. But recitation should be done. Marhum Ayatollah Gul Paigani is a bit strict. He says that if there is darura to pray in congregation, no problem. You can go ahead and pray in congregation and there's no need to repeat the salah later on. But if there is no darura and you are just doing it for extra thawab, then it is definitely good to pray in jama'ah. Lakini, if you can, then you should repeat again the salah as furada. Hazrat Ayatollah Safi Gul Paigani, who most of his fatwas are almost similar to Marhum Ayatollah Gul Paigani, he says, no, even in our times when it's necessary, darura, necessary to achieve unity, that's a good enough reason to go and pray behind the Sunni Imam and not required to repeat the salah later on as furada. So I have decided now to join because it is important, because there is thawab, because there is the darura of unity and the darura of brotherhood. And it is haram if, if we do separately that our, the image we may promote is the image which damages the mazhab of the Ahlul Bayt. But there are problems. As far as the timing of salah are concerned, Fajr is almost the same, Zuhur Asr, same, Isha, no problem. Problem is Maghrib. The difference between Ghurub and Maghrib. Ghurub is sunset. Maghrib is when the darkness appears and covers from the eastern horizon. So how do we resolve this? Another problem that we will face is, so we are going to do our own recitation of the Fatiha and the Surah. 
the Imam may decide to recite a long surah, then what do I do? A third problem will be in the sajda. I may I am required to make sajda on only the earth, but there may be a carpet in the masjid. So what do I do? And problem number four is sometimes uh, once a week the imam may decide to recite a surah in which sajda is wajib. How do I resolve these four problems? Answer. As far as the time is concerned, which is uh, maghrib, there is a way to resolve it. I'll just explain uh, how. As far as the maghrib is concerned, if you remember, there is usually a gap which is kept between the adhan and the iqama. What you need to do is check the time. If the time gap between adhan and iqama is long enough to be equal to the time when after ghurub maghrib sets in, no problem. Then you have reached the time for the wajib salah. As far as the gaps in the qira'a or the gap after ruku' or the gap after tash in tashahud is concerned, in qira'a, once you finish your recitation of your own surah, your own fatiha and your own surah, you can keep silent and listen to the imam's recitation. Or no, you can use what I call the gap fillers. You can recite uh, an ayah of the Qur'an or another short surah with the near that you are reciting Qur'an in Salah, which is allowed. Or you can fill it up, that gap, the Imam is reciting, but you finish your recitation, you can fill the gap by reciting a dua, for example. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا اللَّهُمَ صَلِّ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَآلِهِ Or no, you can make zikr during that time, allowed to make zikr in Salah. The second problem of, or alternatively, is once you finish the recitation of your surah after Fatiha, listen to the Imam and follow the Imam, whatever surah he is reciting, if possible. After Ruku'ah, they lift their head up before they go down to the sajda, there's a gap. That gap usually is for recitation of a dua which is mustahab. So we can also recite the mustahab dua, alhamdulillah, because we are, we are, we are required to say, Sami'allahu liman hamidah. Allah listens to and Allah responds to and replies to the prayer of he who praises him. So let me praise him, alhamdulillah, short praise. Medium praise, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Long praise, Allahumma lakal kibriya'u wal jabarut. So you can have a long praise or no, you continue the praise Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah till the Imam goes down to sajda. The third gap will appear in the tashahud. The tashahud formula they use is a longer one. Our formula is a bit short. In fact, even in our riwayat, there is a longer formula. But if you are not used to it, it doesn't matter. We can add the mustahabbat, it's mustahab before the tashahud to say bismillahi, wa billahi, wa alhamdulillahi, wa khayrul asma'i lillahi, and then ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Or after tashahud, mustahab to say taqabbal Allah, to say taqabbal shafa'atahu of the Holy Prophet, warfa' darajata. And may Allah raise his status. Or no, you make some zikr during that time. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. With the niyyah that zikr is allowed in salah, in any stage of salah. So problem number one was time. Problem number two, uh, praying together was the gaps during qira'a and after ruku and tashahud. Problem number three was sajda. If the mosque is carpeted, then what do you do? The first option is carry your own mohr if it is feasible to do so. You may go to mosques where the other Muslim brothers are tolerant and accepting of the fact that you are using a mohr and a turba, no problem. But if you are in a situation where they are not tolerant, so then don't use the mohr. Take a, take a musalla 
which is made up of material on which such there is allowed, for example. Or look for an area in the mosque where under the carpet or between the carpets there's a place where the marble of the mosque is exposed, the floor. You can make such that on that. But unfortunately, in the places where we will be going, mohar is not acceptable. So we cannot use that. So what do you do then? Try to find out a place where you can make sajda. So for example, if there is a gap between two carpets where the marble is exposed, try to go and find that place. If you can't find that place, no problem. Pray on the carpet. And the salah is sahih. And you don't have to repeat the salah. Because this is a type of taqiyya which is mustahab, which is recommended. Do I need to take time and look everywhere in the mosque till I find the place where there is no carpet and the marble is exposed? No, no need to delay salah and no need to relocate. Pray wherever you are on the carpet. The problem of sajda also is if the imam chooses in the qira'a a surah after fatiha which has a wajib sajda. According to the mazhab of the Ahlul Bayt والسلام, after the recitation of the wajib sajda ayah, immediately sajda is wajib. You can't wait for us to go to ruku and then go to sajda. No, immediately sajda is wajib. Well, if immediately you're going to make sajda in the state of qiyam, your salah is disrupted and therefore it is broken. And the wajib sajda, as you know, the surah Saj Alif Lam Mim sajda, surah. Hamim Sajjada chapter 41, Surah Najm chapter 53, and Surah Alaq. These are the four surahs where Sajda is wajib. Other surahs have Sajda. But, for example, Surah Hajj has Sajda, but it is mustahab and not wajib. So, whenever we followers in Jama'ah hear the Imam recite, or no, whenever we recite ourselves, Sajda becomes wajib. And it becomes wajib immediately, unless for some reason we have forgotten, then whenever we recall, it becomes immediately wajib to make sajda. However, if we did not listen to it carefully and attentively, and we heard it involuntarily, then no, sajda is not wajib, though it's better, but not wajib. In fact, any recitation from anyone makes sajda wajib. If I'm listening carefully and attentively, then I must make sajda. Even if the reciter is a hafiz of the Qur'an, in his sleep he is murmuring and reciting, and he recites the ayah of sajda, and I happen to have heard it, sajda is wajib. Or no, the person is mentally disturbed, or is a non-balik child reciting a wajib sajda ayah. Or no, it has been broadcast on air by radio or TV, but it is live. Such that is wajib. However, if the recitation is a pre-recorded broadcast, so it's not live, then no. You're playing it on a tape, you're playing it on the computer, you're playing it on, you're hearing it on the radio, a pre-recorded one, then no, that's such that is not wajib. In fact, if you are in sajda and you hear a repeat recitation of the ayah of sajda, you have to make a second sajda. Raise your head up and go down again in sajda. It's that important. So now I'm praying behind the Sunni Imam because it is mustahab and because it is full of thawab and the Imam has chosen to recite the wajib sajda surah. What do I do? If I know beforehand that on this particular day, in Salatul Fajr, on a Thursday or a Friday, the Imam will recite the Surah. So right from the beginning, I should make the niyyah of a mustahab salah and not a wajib salah. If I am caught unprepared, I have made the niyyah of a wajib salah, everybody else has gone to sajda. If I can avoid going to sajda in such a way that by not going to sajda I will not be put to any harm, then I make sajda by ishara and not by actually going down and putting the seven parts of the body on the ground. 
But if I can't avoid such that everybody's doing it, if I'm seen not doing it, I'll be exposed to rebuke or reprimand or even harm. Then if by mistake I do the sajda, everybody does it, I was overwhelmed and I also went to sajda, then that is umesahaw, no problem, that sajda is forgiven. Remember, sajda is wajib rukni, but two sajdas are wajib rukni. One sajda is wajib, ghair rukni. But if a person goes sajda down willfully, then definitely that breaks his salah and therefore he will need to repeat the salah. So I've gone down to sajda. In a, because I've heard a wajib sajda ayah. What do I say in the sajda? There's nothing which is wajib to be said in the sajda. Any dhikr you can make is acceptable. Of course, there's a mustahab dhikr, which is la ilaha illallah haqqan haqqa, la ilaha illallah imanan wa tasdiqa, la ilaha illallah ubudiyyatan wa riqqa. Sajadtu laka ya rabbi ta'abudan wa riqqa. لا مستنكفا oh Allah I'm making sajda to you in total obedience not in hesitation or unwillingness ولا مستكبرا and I'm not proud and arrogant as I make my sajda like shaitan بل أنا عبد ذليل ضعيف خائف مستجير must have to say this So these are the daily prayers, and this is how we fill the problems, the gap problem, uh, the timing problem, and the sajda problem. One salah becomes even more problematic, and that is salatul jumu'ah. According to some mushtahids, no problem. Even salatul jumu'ah, you can pray, and it is sahih. But according to Marfum Ayatul Khoi and Hazrat al Sistani, no. If you happen to be a resident, permanent resident, or a temporary resident more than 10 days, then Salatul Jumu'ah is not valid. You must repeat the Salah of that day by praying Salatul Dhuhr again. But if you're a traveler, then you're required to pray a two rak'ah Salah of Dhuhr, then make your knee of Salatul Dhuhr as Qasr and pray Salatul Jumu'ah, no problem. There are some more differences, uh, but I will skip them for the moment. Or maybe let me just quickly point them out. Towards the end of Salah, the manner of Salam, we find that the Sunni Muslim brothers, what they do at the end of Salah is they turn and make Salam to the right and make Salam to the left. In our mazhab, one salam is wajib. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi. Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. You can skip that. So once you make assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, your salah is finished. Once your salah is finished, then you can turn your face right and left. So you can say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Because your salah is finished. Or, no, you want to do all the three salams. No problem. So by the Turning off your eyebrow and eyes to the right or to the left, you make your salam, no problem, that is allowed. But after completion of salah, we normally do the three takbir. And we lift the hands up to the ears. In the Sunni mazhab, doing takbir in salah in such a way that you lift your hands up till your ears is recommended in four places. One is in takbiratul ihram, when you begin the salah. Number two is before you go to ruku'ah. Number three is after you finish ruku'ah. And number four is after sajda. But not after salah is not practiced by them. However, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim have got a hadith which say that other people come to know salah is finished when you make takbir after the salam. So yes, takbir after salam is there in the riwayat, but, but they don't practice it. Another important point that you should note is, according to some Sunni mazhabs, it is haram 
to walk in front of a person praying salah. So you have to be careful. Especially the Hanafi mazhab and the Maliki mazhab say it is haram. Hanbali say it is makruh. Shafi'i says you should avoid in some cases. Conclusion. A quick summary. The common mistakes that we should try to avoid when we are praying salah in the Masjid Al-Haram or Masjid Al-Nabawi. Try not to leave the Masjid just as when the Azan is being recited. Unless, of course, it's an unavoidable uh, excuse. Try not to move between people who are already in the state of prayers. You have reached a bit late, you are trying to find a place. Try not to walk in front of people when you are looking for a place to pray. Avoid taking a mohar. We have seen in past experience that it is disrespected and kicked, unfortunately. And should you use a musalla? Well, it depends on the situation. If the others are using a musalla and you're not going to stand out differently, no problem. Use a musalla. Have your own prayer mat. Avoid if it provokes a negative reaction. Adhan is made and uh, the wajib salah is about to be started in jama'ah and you start your furada salah. Oh no. Avoid that. And try not to keep a gap. Though we in our own masjid unfortunately are used to this wrong habit, there we must be extra careful to avoid the habit of keeping a gap between the ma'amun. And in salah, be very careful. Don't make any movement in salah, standing or bending or prostrating before the imam does. The strict discipline is required. And if unfortunately some have the bad habit of reciting in very loud whispers so that even the person next to you can hear you. No, please avoid these loud whispers. Don't disturb others with your recitation. And you'll find many Muslims, according to some, it is wajib. They say it's a sunnah of the Prophet. We say, no, it is mustahab. But if you can, avoid, don't go bareheaded. Have some head cover uh, with you. It is better. And the automatic reaction will be in the second rak'ah after you finish the uh, uh, surah and the hamd and you want to go to ruku Allahu Akbar you will want to make qunood you can make a qunood even with your hands down Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ali for example and then you go down to ruku doesn't matter you don't need to raise your hands by ishara you can make your qunood so I've completed now uh, the wajib actions required of us when we are in Medina especially the prayers there are lots of mustahabbat, the ziyara, the visit to the different historical sites that will be done by other speakers. Let me very quickly introduce the outline of the Hajj and then inshallah from tomorrow we will begin with the details. So now we are in Medina. The time has come for us to prepare to begin the wajib Hajj. Wajib Hajj technically is known as Hajjul Islam or another name is Hajjatul Islam that means the Hajj which is wajib once in a lifetime in Islam Hajjul Islam this Hajjul Islam is made up of two parts in Surah Baqarah in ayah number 196 Allah discusses the details of how Hajj should be done and then he says فَمَنْ تَمَتَّعَ بِالْعُمْرَةِ إِلَى الْحَجِّ فَمَا اسْتَيْسَرَ مِنَ الْهَدِي if you do tamattu' from the umrah to go to the hajj. So there's a type of hajj. ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ أَهْلُهُ حَاضِرِي مَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Those who don't stay near Masjid al-Haram within a radius of 12 miles according to some riwayah or up till 18 miles of the Masjid al-Haram. If you don't stay that close, in which case you have to do uh, Hajj uh, Ifrad or Hajj Qiran. If you stay far away, like all of us, then we must do the Hajj where there is Tamattu' from the Umrah to the Hajj. So this Hajjul Islam is made up of two parts. The Umrah, which is therefore called Umrah to Tamattu' based on this ayah of the Quran. And after the Umrah, there is a Tamattu' and then there is a Hajj 
which follows, which is known as Hajj Tamattu. The Umrah Tamattu is made up of five wajib components. The Hajj Tamattu is made up of 13 wajib components. We will discuss the details later on. Let me start with the introduction to Umrah Tamattu as an outline and then the details later on. The five wajib parts of Umrah Tamattu are first is to enter into the state of Ihram from a place known as the Miqat. In Surah Baqarah, ayah number 197, Allah says, Al-Hajj Ashhurun Ma'lumat. Hajj can only be done in specified months. You can't do it at any other time. There's a waqt fixed. So also, Hajj can only begin at a fixed place. I can't enter into Ihram from my home. I can't enter into Ihram from the airport. I can't enter into Ihram from Jidda. I can't enter into Ihram from any other place. There's a fixed place known as the Miqat. Just like I can't pray Salat to Dhuhr before Dhuhr. Well, there is a fixed time for it. Likewise for the Ihram. فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ so the second wajib act is after I go to the Miqat, for us it will be Masjid al-Shajara, I'll explain the details later. In Masjid al-Shajara, we enter into the state of Ihram with the niyyah, with the removal of stitch dressing, and with the declaration of the talbiyah, we enter into Ihram. In the state of Ihram, certain things become haram. فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّةِ You've entered into the uh, near of Hajj and the state of Ihram, then some things become haram. There are 26 things which become haram. Just like Salah. Allahu Akbar. Almost 9, 10 things become haram. I can't talk, I can't look right and left, I can't laugh, I can't cry, I can't eat, I can't drink. I can't do some other things like um, say I uh, mean breaks my Salah or close my hands breaks my salah so there are certain things which become haram in salah and that's why the takbir is known as takbiratul ihram likewise in fasting there are some things which are haram they break the fast so eating and drinking or submerging the head under water or uh, forced vomiting or use of uh, liquid enema or there are certain sexual activities or masturbation or uh, staying in the state of Janaba. These are all haram in the state of fasting. Likewise, in the state of Hajj, there are 26 things which are haram. We'll discuss the details. After that, we proceed from Masjid al Shajara in the state of Ihram till we reach Masjid al Haram. There, the third part of the Umrah becomes wajib, which is known as Tawaf. Tawaf of the Umrah to Tamatur. I have to come there in the state of purity. In fact, the purity is so important, tawaf is batil if I'm not in the state of tahara. In fact, it is mustahab to do ghusl. In fact, there are four or five ghusls which are mustahab before I can go for tawaf. So I have to be in the state of purity. I'm entering a pure sanctuary around the Kaaba. وَلْيَطَّوَّفُوا بِالْبَيْتِ الْعَتِيقِ In Surah Hajj, Allah says, let them come and do tawaf. Just like the angels do tawaf around the around the arsh and i have to start at a particular point the hajar al aswad and i have to end the rounds at hajar al aswad so my entry point and my exit point and my beginning and my end is billahi wa min allahi wa billahi wa ila allah and after the completion of the tawaf seven rounds without any delay unnecessary delay. Immediately I must proceed to the Maqam Ibrahim. وَاتَّخِذُوا مِمْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى Surah Baqarah Allah says, and go and pray Salah at the Maqam Ibrahim. So after Tawaf is completed, Tawaf is incomplete in fact, until I do Salah to Tawaf. Which Salah to Tawaf? The Salah where I have to go and stand where Ibrahim salam stood. The salah where I have to stand, in fact, behind the place where Ibrahim alayhi salam stood. Ibrahim alayhi salam becomes my imam and I become the ma'amum. 
This salah makes my tawaf complete. I want to reach God through tawaf, but I can't unless I've committed to follow Ibrahim and the pr prophet who, who Ibrahim prayed for, the last prophet. And the, last, and the Imams whom the last Prophet introduced as the true Imams. That commitment I have to make. Otherwise my tawaf is incomplete. I have to go and repeat my tawaf. The fifth wajib act is the sa'i between Safa and Marwa, which has different reasons. One of the reasons is we are replicating and duplicating the struggle and the sacrifice which Hajar made in order to search and to look for water to, to quench the thirst of the young infant Ismail. Si'i becomes a symbol that I'm ready to struggle in my life and to serve God and to serve mankind, especially the poor, powerless, defenseless mankind, the way Hajar did. And finally, after Si'i is complete, just like Salah begins with Takbiratul Ihram and ends with Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. So also Umratul Tamattu ends by Taqseer, by trimming of the hair of the head for both ladies and gents, but for gents also the hair of the beard. And the Umratul Tamattu becomes, comes to an end. Now, of the 26 haram things of the ihram of the Umrah to Tamattu, almost all, but not all, some still remain haram. Most become halal. Therefore, I'm allowed to have muta'a. Muta'a here meaning the enjoyment of what was haram for me otherwise. Perfume, haram. Halal, no. Contact with the opposite sex, haram. Now it has become halal. This state of renewed enjoyment of what was temporarily haram during the ihram of Umrah to Tamattu is the reason why this Umrah is called Tamattu and is the reason why the Hajj is also called Tamattu. There are other types where there is no Tamattu. Let's pray to Allah for Tawfiq to be able to prepare to undertake this journey in a manner that we achieve the goals for which Allah has legislated this Hajj. Inshallah. If there are any questions or clarifications, please. Yes, please. No, the rules of Jama'ah will not apply. So you'll have to delay the beginning of Salah to the next Raka'ah. You can make a dummy. Uh, ruku with the Imam, a dummy sajda with the Imam, and then stand up and make the niyyah to start the new salon. Yes, please. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Ji. Qadha salat, definitely. Any salah you can.